worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, he holds the victory. There's joy. Welcome, everybody. I'm setting this up a little higher because I'm calling Bruce Toll up to the stage for this next song. Hey, welcome. Uh, man, my brother Bruce is a tall guy. All right, um, I want to welcome everyone online and in the house. Uh, is, it, is it a joyful house? Because we should be joyful. We have the creator of the universe who wants a relationship with us. Isn't that cool? And we have a creator of the universe that gave his son to give us eternal life. Isn't that cool? And then on top of that, we have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that can bring us joy when we don't feel it. So if you don't feel it, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to make you feel it this morning. All right. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I can't count the times that I've been in a broken night And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia I forget that you keep coming around There ain't no way you'll ever let me down Good God Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's 
goes on forever that your mercy never stops so why would i assume you'd be somebody that you're not like sun in the morning i know you're gonna be there every day so what on earth could make me be afraid good god almighty Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty. Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. His shoulder might be a bum, but his voice ain't. <laughs> oh, it is so fun worshiping with you guys and having guest singers up here. All right, who's next? I'm going to pull. <laughs> All right, this next one is new. We're going to have the words up. So sing with us as you can, but uh, enjoy this. And, uh, you know, I was accused of going country, so this is just par for the course. Shades of his glory wakes us with mercy and love. Jesus does. He holds the orphan and comforts the widow, cries for injustice, feels everyone's sorrow, carries the pain of his children. Jesus does. Stands the heart of the sinner, showers his grace over all our mistakes, washes us clean with his blood. Jesus does. Who sits? 
sings the song of sweet forgiveness. Who stole the keys to hell and the grave? Who has the power to save? Jesus does. So we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son. Praise to the Spirit. my rescue when I needed him most and he saved my soul sing that again oh what a friend oh what a savior he's always been good he's always been faithful he came to my rescue when I needed him most and he saved See? 
Jesus, you are beautiful. From the life you live to show us how to live, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, and you're our king. You've earned that. Even before you died on the cross. Holy Spirit, give us the eyes of Jesus this week because we're building a kingdom that will last beyond this life, beyond this earth. And we are the light of the world because Jesus, you called us to continue your ministry and to continue to build God's kingdom. And I pray that joy would be on us this week as we leave here today that, Holy Spirit, you'd bring joy and that you'd give us the eyes of Jesus and the heart of Jesus towards others, that we would love and celebrate life the way Jesus did, that we would draw others into that love and celebration that Jesus did. You are truly beautiful, you're truly wonderful, and you truly are our King. We've been setting aside the first Sunday of each month to kind of continue on something we started in January. In January, we, we did a series on prayer, and we wanted to uh, give over this year as a church to, to learning more about prayer and to kind of trickling this through the entire year. So the first Sunday of the month, uh, this is what we do. We're talking about prayer. We learned in January that, that prayer isn't uh, just a religious rite. It's not something that, that, we, that we simply say and magical things happen. It's not, it's not a magical incantation, but it's a, it's a conversation. It's a conversation with God. It's a conversation with our Creator. Uh, we can talk to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and um, it's, a, it's a great privilege. This last uh, week, or rather last month, uh, we, we learned about heart work. That is that uh, we, we can invite God to, to, to change our hearts. And uh, if, you, if you didn't hear that message yet, I'd encourage you to go back online or on YouTube uh, and, and check that out uh, the first Sunday of, of May. But you know, whenever we talk about spiritual disciplines, um, it, can, it, can be, it can be kind of rough because it's like any, any discipline, you know? Uh, maybe you feel like you should be eating better, and so it's a discipline to, to, to do that, right? And if you don't do it, you, you feel lousy. Uh, maybe you feel like you should be uh, uh, routinely talking to more people because you're kind of with, withdrawn. COVID kind of did something to you. You're still working at home, and you, and you need to do that, but you, you, you don't do it, and so you, you just you feel badly about that. And any time that we're talking about a discipline, that, that sort of thing happens. I made the mistake of uh, clicking on, a, on an ad for... What sounded to me like it was going to be a really good, uh, not this one, five best bench grinders for 2023. That was another one. But um, 13 bad habits that can ruin your life. And right, the number one habit, it just nailed me, you know? And I'm like, oh, great, where is this going? You know, and I ended up batting pretty well, but there, there were three in there that, that just made me feel about this big. And I mean, I'm like, ruined my life, really? So we, we just realized that, that that's the case. But here's the thing. At River Hills, we, we all acknowledge that every single one of us is broken and messed up. That's kind of our code for sin. We don't use the sin word a lot around here, um, except in today's music. And, uh, but, you know, we, it's hard to do the broken and messed up thing in music. But, uh, and a friend of mine reminded me that even though we're broken and messed up, we are also loved and adored. And, and we need to remember that. That just because something is off in your life doesn't mean that God has rejected you. And so as, as we're talking about spiritual disciplines and as we're talking about prayer, if, if you think that, that your prayer life isn't where it needs to be, 
don't, don't like beat yourself up about it and think that you're, you're worthy of, of the garbage for some reason. But remember that you're loved and adored by God, and he just wants what's best for you. I had something happen to me that uh, was really disappointing. Uh, it was a long day, and I had been wearing these shoes. These are, my, these are now my favorite shoes. They're Birkenstocks, and I have some Birkenstock sandals, and I was at the shoe store, and the guy said, well, you know, Birkenstock now has this shoe. Why don't you check it out? And I looked at it, and it looked really dorky. And I, when I saw it, it looked like a, kind of a cloddy shoe, you know, doesn't it? It looks a little bit cloddy, but then, then I realized, hey, that has kind of a funky look to it. I kind of like that. And uh, so I got these, and it was a long day, and I took them off, and uh, I just climbed into bed. And then at 2 o'clock in the morning, I heard our new puppy under the bed. And Baxter had grabbed my shoe, and I turned on my, my cell phone flashlight, and I was searching for him, and I found him underneath the bed, and he was in there. And I got really mad, and, and I didn't do anything to him. Um, but when Debbie woke up in the morning, she said, what was all that noise at 2 a.m.? And I said, ah, you're a stupid puppy. Chewing on my shoe, my favorite shoe, and I'm going to have to get a new pair and throw them away. And she said, what? I'm show me. And chewed the back thing, you know, and I'm like, one of, one of, one of the bad faults that I have, according to the 13 articles, is that I tend to be a perfectionist, and I want things just right, and this wasn't right, so it was time to throw them away, right? And Debbie reminded me, you know what? It's still totally good. You still love the way it feels. You love that shoe. So, buck up, buddy boy, and put it on. And so, that's what it's like with when you feel like you haven't done right in prayer. Just put it back on and make sure you untie the laces before you do it. And don't tell my shoe salesman that I just did what I did. Lord God, as we talk about this subject now, as we talk about prayer, God, I pray that we will feel a new sense of your wanting to be in conversation with us. You're wanting to, to be here in our lives. And so, God, speak to us now through your word, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. So, have you ever noticed that we become like the people we hang out with? We've talked about that. We talked about that when we were talking about habits. We, we tend to have, we, we have this tendency to become like the people that we hang out with. We become like the five closest people to us. If they're cussing, we're cussing. I can attest to that in high school. Man, my best friends, the F-bomb all the time, that was me. Uh, if, if, if our friends are exercising, we're exercising. If they're doing low carb, you, know, you get the idea, right? So we also begin to talk like the people that we hang out with. So let me ask you this. How many of you uh, do not come from Wisconsin? Raise your hand high. High and proud. How, how many of you come from Illinois? Okay, don't, don't judge us, okay? But now, those of you from Wisconsin, how do you pronounce this word? B-A-G. See? See, yeah, did, did you hear it? Did you hear it? We, we, we have a tendency to, to become like the people that we hang around with, but we also tend to speak like they do as well. Here's another one that gets some of us who don't come from this area. When, when, you, when you go to meet the person that lives on the other side of the street, you walk the street. You walk what? Yeah, see, I hear it. Do, do, do people from not Illinois, do, do you hear that? Across. You know, and, 
And, and, and, and I tell my kids, I said, you know, don't, don't ever pick that up. And so we're all together one day, and all of a sudden, my, my son Stuart says, Dad, you just said a cross. And I said, I did not. He said, yes, you did. I said, I did not. And the rest of the family said, yeah, you did. Because we have a tendency to start to speak like the people that we hang out with. And some of you are saying, what? <laughs> are you actually explaining this, this across there's thing? No I know there's no T in it. But so anyway, I looked it up in the dictionary because I was going to prove that there is no such word as across. And guess what it says? A, across is a dialectical version of across predominantly in the upper Midwest. So just, just so you know, um, it's, it's apparently a real thing. But so we, if we become like the people that we hang out with, let me say this. When we pray, we're hanging out with God. And our speech patterns change. We have the things of God on our minds and in our hearts and on our tongues, and on our lips. We become more like him when we're talking with him. And so, before we get into the heart of it, I just want to ask you a question. How much time do I spend, how much time do you spend hanging out with God? This is one of the questions that hits me up the side of the head every time I ask myself this question, but I think it's a good check-in kind of a question. So just take three seconds of quiet and answer this. All right, now we're going to look at a passage in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Because when the great spiritual leader of the first century is instructing another spiritual uh, and Christian leader, he says this. Paul, the Apostle Paul, says this to a man by the name of Timothy. And I'll have this on the side screen. This is from uh, the message translation of the Bible. And he says this. The first thing I want you to do is to pray. Pray every way you know how for everyone that you know. This is the way our Savior God wants us to live. Do this. I just want to take a few minutes and kind of dissect this a little bit because uh, I have a tendency in my own mind, unless I slow myself down, to just kind of read that and uh, just let it, let it go. It says, what are those first three words? The, the first thing. And, you know, at Initially, you want to say, well, he's just kind of going to give us a list of first, second, third, fourth. But then I looked at this word, and I looked and, and studied where that word is coming from. And it's not about, this is the first point, this is my second point, this is my third point. It's not like that. What he's saying is that, that this is something that is a priority. You see... It's not even in time. It's not like when, when you come into a gathering called the church, uh, the first thing you ought to do is to pray. He's not saying that. What, what he's saying is the first thing, the thing of utmost priority, the top priority for you is to pray. See, I, 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 I looked up at, at this word, and it means the first in dignity, the first in importance before all other things. So Jesus will use that, this, uh, the same word when he says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things in your life that you think you need and are, are important will be given to you. Don't chase after all these things. Rather, chase after God first. The top priority, he's saying, should be your heart inclined toward God, Jesus is. So that, that's how he's using this word. Paul's using this word that same way there. And Jesus also, uh, you maybe have, have heard of the, the, the story of how after Palm Sunday, that day when he's recognized as, 
as, as Lord and King, he, he comes into Jerusalem and after he goes into the temple and, and he sees something going on in the temple that, that really upsets him and that's that, that people are, are collecting money probably to, uh, for, for the people to have sacrifices for, for their sins and it just blows his mind that people would be charging money for people to get forgiveness for sins and he walks up to the tables and he starts to flip them and he says this, my house, my father's house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves and robbers. You see, he's, he's setting the same priority that, that Paul is. He's saying the first thing the first thing about my father's house is that it is a place of, of prayer. And you need to realize that. And so you might, if you have a Bible or if you have you know, highlighting on, on your device, uh, go, go ahead and highlight th those words and, and make, a, make a little note there that, that this, is, this is top priority. This is putting first things first for him. But then it goes on and, and he says this, Pray every way that you know how. Well, what, what does that mean? So remember, we're reading this from the message translation, and the message translation is super readable, and it's a great way to, to get into the Bible. But if, if you want to go deeper and kind of understand things, sometimes you, you need to have other versions uh, that, that you look at. And so when I read that, I said, so is there more to that? And of course... In uh, the New International Version, uh, it's, it's, it takes every word that, that these other translators just say, every way that you know how. And he says this, I urge you then, first of all, and notice four different words here, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. And so... Is, is there a difference? Is, is he just piling on words? Are, are, are those things all the same? Are petitions and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving, are those all the same thing? Well, we know that thanksgiving isn't the same thing as, uh, as making intercession or, or making a petition. So let, let's take a couple of minutes and, and see what he's talking about here. So he says, prayer is the first thing. And now I want to urge you that you make Petitions. Petitions. Now, as a, as a kid, my, my view of this was highly, highly influenced by the theologian James Morrison of The Doors, otherwise known as Jim Morrison. And uh, there was a song that I used to listen to with headphones only because my mom would have yelled at me when I was about 11 and, uh, and it's the song, The End. Are any of you familiar with, with The Doors and the song, The End? And uh, he begins the song by saying, when I was back there in seminary school, there was a professor who put forth the proposition that you can petition the Lord with prayer. Petition the Lord with prayer. Petition the Lord. And then at the top of Jim Morrison's lungs, he shouts out, You cannot petition the Lord with prayer. And loving his music, that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole of theological inquiry as a kid. And I would ask people, so what does it mean to petition the Lord? Why, 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 why does Jim Morrison say you can't petition the Lord? What, what, what does this mean? And this is the way my, my brain worked even then. I mean, I, Still works the same weird way now, doesn't it? Um, uh, but I, I, I've always loved asking these kinds of difficult questions, and why would Jim say that? Well, what does it mean to, to petition? If you, if you look at that word in the way it's used uh, through Scripture, it, uh, it refers to, to coming to God with urgency and, and even desperation. That, that when, when, you, 
when you need something and you don't have it and you're not getting it. Jesus actually invites us to petition God with prayer. Remember that the story of, of the woman and, and the governor, and she's, she's looking for, for help, and, and she, she asks, and he says no, and he, she asks, and he says no, and she continues to ask and ask and ask, and finally, he says, fine, have it. And Jesus says, and this is what the kingdom of God is like, and this is what God is like. What's he saying? You can petition the Lord with prayer. I was talking with a guy after the first service. He said, I love when you bring up, you know, contemporary, or not contemporary for a lot of us, right? Um, but music that, that, that was influential in my life, too. And he said, why, why did Morrison say that? And, and he thought, maybe because as a kid, his dad was, uh, was a naval commander, but also... Uh, he was a Christ follower, and uh, he heard a lot of this, and Morrison didn't get the things that he prayed for, and so he's simply saying, you know, you can petition, but don't count on anything. How many of you have ever petitioned God and, and something came back to you through that? Something good, yeah. Can, can you raise your hand high? Because the, the importance of this right now, and if, if, if you're wondering, take a look around the room. Because we need to realize that we can petition the Lord with prayer. And when we have urgent needs, we have a brother in this room whose dad is going through a very difficult uh, medical crisis. And please know that you can petition God in prayer. And you can come to him again and again and again. My parents petitioned God, our family petitioned God for no less than 23 years on behalf of my brother until he got pulled over for a busted taillight and he blew a 2.1. And the cop said, there must be something wrong because you're obviously not drunk. My brother was drunk and dusted. But that was an answer to prayer. And his whole life changed when a pastor came and simply said to him, Don, isn't it time you said yes? And he pastor didn't have to say anything else to my brother. And my brother broke down weeping. And I believe it was because my parents petitioned God in prayer, not just once a day or twice a day, but throughout every day for 23 years. You can petition God with prayer. It's, it's this prayer of urgency and desperation. And Paul says, first and foremost, pray. And petition God. And he says, offer up prayers. Now, this is an interesting word because uh, when, when Jesus' followers come to him and, and they say, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus says, this is how you shall pray. Our Father who art in heaven, you, 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 know, you know the prayer, right? And then... The word is used again when, when Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, the night in which he was betrayed, and it says that he prayed. And the word has this, this very intentional aspect to it. It's not the prayer that I like to tell people, oh, I, I, I pray without ceasing, you know, and it sounds like it's very holy, but I'm just quoting a passage of scripture, and what I mean by that is I, I, I shoot off these, these, these little prayers to God all the time. It's not intentional. That is, it's not, it, it's not th this deliberate thing, it's just it pops into my mind, and so I say it, you know? I don't have a very good filter, and so I just say it. 
But this kind of prayer is set aside a time, have what Jesus refers to as, as a prayer closet. When, when, when you pray, go, go into a hidden place and, and pray. pray. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray, pray a formal prayer. Do, do these things. And Paul says, first and foremost, pray. Petition God and, and say prayers. Be intentional about it. And he goes on, and he says this. Intercede. Now, intercession is, is praying on behalf of, of somebody else. It's, let's say, can I, can I pick on you two? Does, 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 does Chris ever do anything wrong? We, we, we have this joke that, that, that Chris and I both grew up with, with adoring mothers, and consequently, we, we have this weird psychological problem that we don't think we ever do anything wrong, because <laughs> we, we, we have this good mother syndrome going on. And our wives, on the other hand, offer a counterpoint. Um, and so, so let's just say that, that Sarah comes to me and says, can, can, can you please talk to Chris? This has never happened like um, can, can, can you please talk to Chris? And what, what this implies is that there is a relationship here and that there is a relationship here. And so when we intercede on someone else's behalf, it implies a, a relational conversation. This is not just having a bullet list of things that, that, that we shoot down the list. Oh, please help Aunt, Aunt Hilda's corn and Uncle Jackson's hemorrhoid. You know, it's not that. It's, it's this much more intense conversation with someone with whom we have a relationship on behalf of someone else with whom we have a relationship. Does that, does that make sense to you? And so that's... What this is, it's an idea of a conversation and closeness is implied in it. And then he says this. So we are to petition, we're to pray, we're to intercede, and we're to give thanks. Now, a, a couple minutes ago, people raised their hand, right? When we ask, have you ever received something after petitioning God? And just that act of raising the hand, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that cool to do that? Because what it does is it drives you back to say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for speaking into that, to, to making that, that change. Our daughter was flying back from Italy, just like dad was flying back from Italy. And uh, I, I, I grew up by O'Hare Airport. And there was a, a, uh, a plane that crashed right near the fuel depots um, north of the airport. And that's always scarred me. And when, when, when we travel on a plane, both my, my wife and I, she, she's worse than I am. but. Uh, I, I love flying. I, I just, I always had that image. And Katrina was flying back from, uh, from Italy yesterday, and a, a luggage handler drove a forklift fork through the fuselage of the plane. And you know, as soon as we heard that, she, she's like, "Oh, I've had such bad travel luck this year." And I'm like, "Sweetheart, no. I mean, bad travel luck is taking off." with a hole in the side of the plane. Good travel luck is people saying, hey, we can't fly this plane. Um, and giving thanks is, and again, it's, it's a conversation that's marked by this gentle cheerfulness of a grateful heart, as one commentator put it. And saying, thank you, God, for answering this prayer, and for this prayer. And, and, and for doing this in my life. When, when we sing some of the songs that we sing, or when, when we sing, uh, 
uh, great is thy faithfulness, right? That's what this is, and it reminds us of that power. So prayer uh, is, is all of these things. So when he says, first and foremost, pray, this is what, this is what we're talking about. Now, let's, let's listen to the rest of this portion of Scripture. So we're back now in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And he says this. The first thing I want you to do is to pray. Pray every way you know how. With petitions, with prayers, with intercessions, and with thanksgiving. Okay, good. The first thing you do, pray every way you know how for everyone you know. Pray especially for rulers and their governments to rule well so that we can be quietly about our business of living simply in a humble way. Now, I just want to pause there for a second. Pray, pray for people who are in authority. Now, remember, around here, we understand that the Bible was written for us, but not to us, right? There's a difference. And so we have to ask the question, okay, to better understand this, to whom was this written and what was going on when it was written? Pray for those who are in authority over you. Well, guess who was in authority over the people to whom this was written? A man by the name of Nero. Nero good or Nero bad? How bad was Nero? Nero was very bad. If you remember, just real simply, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. That, that was his, his heritage. That, that's, that's, what, that's what he's remembered for. And then he went ahead and he blamed it on, guess who? On Christians. And guess what resulted as, from that? The greatest persecution against Christians in history. You know, it was just... And so Paul says, pray for everyone in authority. He's saying, pray for Nero. Not just the people that you like, but the people that you don't. And he goes on. This is the way our Savior God wants us to live. He wants us not he wants not only us, but he wants everyone saved, you know. Everyone to get to know the truth that we've learned. That there's one God and only one and one priest mediator between God and us, Jesus, who offered himself in exchange for everyone held captive by sin to set them all free. Eventually, the news is going to get out. You know, he's, he's one of these who, when someone says, yeah, I don't want to pray for Nero, he's, he's, he's scum, and he's like, you know, he's not with Jesus yet. He, he's one of those who likes the three-letter word, yet. He's always having hope. And you see, that's what prayer does. Prayer changes our, our heart so that instead of being focused on, on negative and focused on what's wrong, we instead focus on what God can do in someone's life. And he'll, he'll go on and, and he'll say, you know, of all the people in the world, I was the worst of sinners, but God rescued me. Paul will say this about himself. He was a murderer. He was a scoundrel. He was against everything that, that Jesus did. And so he has hope that God can change people. And so he says, focus on that. Eventually, the news about Jesus is going to get out, and this, and, and this only has been my appointed work, getting the news to those who have never heard of God and explaining how it works by simple faith and plain truth. Since prayer, now I'm at verse 8 of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Since prayer is at the bottom of all of this, what I want mostly is for men to pray, not shaking angry fists at enemies, but raising holy hands to God. And I want women to get in there with the men in humility before God, not primping before a mirror or chasing the latest fashions, but doing something beautiful for God. 
and becoming beautiful doing it. And you see, he's saying that prayer does this. It it shapes our hearts and it shapes our minds and it shapes our behavior. It shapes our attitudes. So for the last, uh, man, I don't know how many years, every once in a while, uh, probably once a quarter at least, I go back and I read First and Second Timothy and Titus because these are three letters that Paul wrote to, to Christian leaders. And what I want to do is just share real quickly, I'm going to read these, these verses, and I want you to hear how he sets prayer against the alternative. And the alternative here is a critical heart. So in First Timothy chapter 6, He brings this up, and he's talking about some Christian leaders, and he says, they have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy and strife and malicious talk and evil suspicions and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means of financial gain. See, you have to realize that there are some people who just like to flick the match and see what kind of a bonfire that they can make, even though they are so-called Christian leaders. They, they, they flick the match everywhere. And Paul says, don't be like that. That is not honoring God. We don't throw the match at our enemies. Rather, we pray for our enemies. Second Timothy, he's, he's writing this again uh, in chapter 2. And he says, Keep reminding God's people of these things and warn them before God against quarreling about words. It's of no value and only ruins those who listen. And it's like piling on because he just keeps on on going here. And he says says the same thing. I'm going to skip to to Titus because there are just too many here and my time is out. But in Titus, he says, there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those who are telling Christians that they have to get circumcised. Well, guys, that they have to get circumcised. They must be silenced because they're disrupting whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach, and that for their own gain. And again, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 9, he says, avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law because these are unprofitable and useless. Underline that verse. I mean, this one blows me away, because he says, avoid fighting about what things might mean in the law. So what is the law? Remember, to whom this was written. The law is, for the people to whom this was written, the, it was scripture, it was the Bible. And this one nails me every time I read it, and especially right now, because I'm just reading it with a fresh set of eyes this this last week. And I realize all those times when I've said disparaging things to people who believe differently than I do about, about God and Jesus. And he says, you know, don't don't lambast them. Just pray for them. Be glad that God's using them in some people's lives. I, I, I don't agree with the theology of different churches. I mean, that's why we are who we are, right? But you know, God has used churches that I don't agree with to bring people to Jesus and to grow them. And if they spend their whole life there, I don't think God's going to say, well, because you went to the first church of the blah, 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 You're not welcome in my heaven. The question is, are they following Jesus? Are they trusting him? Then pray for them. Give thanks for them. Petition. Intercede. Do these things. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the scripture because they're unprofitable and useless. Crazy to me. Warn a divisive person once. Warn them a second time. After have nothing to do with them. So, to wrap it up. Paul tells Timothy, 
pray rather than criticize and argue. River Hills. Why does it say prayer? River Hills, pray every way you know how. Pray every way you know how. River Hills, petition and pray and intercede and give thanks for, for what? I want to give you three things to pray about in the weeks that lie ahead. Scott did a great job in bringing home the need for people to to serve more at River Hills. Our growth has exceeded the growth of our our ministry team. And we need to we, we need to bolster our ministry teams. And for those of you who are new, this is something that I want to challenge you on. Because we want to continue to reach out into our community because as Paul was telling Timothy, this is what God's about. He he wants he wants other people to to, to come to him and to understand. And the only way we can do that is by building our ministry teams. And so we're kind of calling this the summer of service where, where we all have the opportunity to, to go and try different things. Bethany's in back with, uh, with Sydney and others taking care of kids and, and building up kids. You should see it back there. Walk, take a walk through there. It's, it's so cool. And, you know, you can go back there and volunteer and say, hey, I'll, I'll help you for a week or two. And you might go back there and God will just melt your heart. And it will turn from volunteering into serving because God's got a hold of you. On the other hand, you might see a kid go back there and stick his hand on the back and rub it in his butt and then pick his nose and then eat it. And you're like, I have no desire to be back here ever again. And please don't touch anything on the counter. And that's fine. You know, you're not being called to that area. And maybe then you'll want to, you know, mess around with the, with the cameras. Wash your hands first. And, <laughs> and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, see if that's someplace where you go. Or maybe and really wash your hands if you're going to help back in the cafe. Hey, do you need any help back in the cafe? I mean, there, there, there are all of these different opportunities. And we're going to make these known uh, week by week. So pray and ask God. Petition God, saying, God, help me to find the place where I can best serve. Intercede for, for each other, saying, God, help, help my, my friend who, who's just been showing up and hasn't gotten really connected to, to your kingdom yet. God, give them a place to serve. Pray for the youth of our community. It was graduation on Friday. How many of you heard the fireworks? It's always fun. Started in during during COVID, and I'm like, you know, once you do once you do fireworks for one graduating class, you got to do them for each one now. So that's what they're doing. And uh, but summer is the most dangerous time for our kids. Young boys and girls experiment sexually during the summer when they have more time and they don't have supervision. Young people experiment with with drugs and alcohol during the summer. And although it's not the national uh, trend in SOC, uh, it's a dark subject, but I just want to mention it. You've seen the be kind signs around. That's when summer is the time when kids in our community have taken their lives. We need to intercede for them, don't we? We need to intercede. We need to pray. And beyond that, we need to do. And I want you to pray for a youth ministry team. We we have had in the past a couple of go-rounds with some really great youth ministry here when we didn't own this building. We rented larger facilities than this. And when we came here, we, we realized that this was going to be kind of a constricting force. We have about 5,800 square feet here. We've had up to 20,000 in the past. 
And we, we need to figure out how to do youth ministry here because we have so many gifted individuals and we have need. Our, we have a big fifth grade class that's, that's aging out of, uh, out of the program in the back and they're going to middle school and we need to have a middle school and high school ministry again. We used to have 70 kids who showed up on Wednesday nights. Your daughter came through that program. We had the loft and we had backstage. And guys, it was kicking. And we can do that again. I give thanks for what happened during that time. And because I give thanks, I know that I can petition God and that I can intercede on, on behalf of you and ask God, God, break our hearts for the things that break yours. God, protect our kids and God, use us and, and raise up uh, women and men and boys and girls who can, who can help uh, reach the youth of our, our community. And God, bring us the resources that we might be able to, to even uh, perhaps soon hire a, a youth couple or at least a, a youth leader, a youth pastor, and to, to go deep into our community and, and to introduce kids to the source of all hope and the source of all life. God, we pray that. And finally, I ask you to pray for this. Pray for more space. We need to figure out whether we're going to add another service or whether we're going to bust down some walls or whether we're going to move. And we need to figure it out. We've been in 20,000 square feet before. All we need to do has come up with cash that God has already given to us. We need to figure that out. We bought this place for 40 cents on the dollar. And I believe God can do that miracle again and even exceed it because he's done it before. So I'm praying that God would open up the space significantly larger or give us the resources to break down some walls that we might be able to utilize the resources right here in this community to reach our community. Lord God, give us your vision. You have given us so many resources, God, and so many talents, and you've given us passion. God, I pray that all of these things would come together, that we might be able to be the church that reaches this community, just as you were calling Timothy and Titus to reach the community that they were placed in. God, thank you that you've given us this thing called prayer and that you love to hear from us, that, that you long for us to, to come like children to their daddy. Say, can we please do this? Can we please have this? Dad, do you, do you think this is something that, that we could do together? God, thank you for that privilege. Send us from this place to be praying people, to be praying families, to be a praying church and a praying community. And we'll give you all thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for your attention to God's word today. And if you are interested in serving, please send us an email at serve at riverhillschurch.org and we'll get the ball rolling or check out your app and you'll see it there too. Thanks.